Self-advocacy is perhaps the last of the civil rights movements, and at its roots, self-advocacy is about equality for people with intellectual disabilities. It's about advocating for oneself and standing up for one's rights. Massachusetts Advocates Standing Strong is a statewide self-advocacy network that just celebrated its 10th anniversary. We attended their 10th annual conference and talked to self-advocates, allies, and supporters about the importance of self-advocacy, mass, and their goals for the future. Massachusetts Advocates Standing Strong is a nonprofit organization and it's made up of self-advocates who are people with cognitive and developmental disabilities. I started MASS about 13 years ago. Um, how, we, how we got it all started was, you know, over the years I managed to do a lot of traveling and I feel how organizations kept popping up and I thought it'd be a really neat idea if MASS had its own organization. And so when I came back to Boston, I presented it to DMR. And the person I used to work there named Melissa Probst. Um, I approached her about it and she asked, do, do I want to do this? And I say yes. And she said, how, well, how can we go about it? And so what we did, we, we sat there and we wrote letters to different regions and see if anybody's interested on in starting up a steering committee. Mass, or Mass Advocate Standing Strong, started out as a steering committee in 1995 and it was made up of people with a variety of uh, disabilities or challenges and people that were advocates, like people that worked for the Department of Mental Retardation, some staff people, got together and they met over a two or three year period to try to organize a statewide self-advocacy organization. Self-advocacy is a person with a disability who's, sit, who's advocating for themselves or advocates for others. And if you think about it, the self-advocacy movement is like the civil rights movement. Self-advocacy is uh, you speak up for yourself and um, making your own choices. Basically the bottom line is that people want to be accepted. Okay, they want to be treated equally. You know, they want to know that, that they are important. And one of the dreams and goals that I have for Mass was that Mass would be run by the self-advocates. It would be their organization Nobody can come and take away from them. This is what it was, it was developed for. And that they are in charge. I think the, the movement that we're seeing is, there's no other way to, to put it in any context other than it's a civil rights movement. It's, it's a movement to allow people to have control over their own lives. And that's just, we all want control over our own lives. We all want to control what's going on. And I think that's just a very basic principle that now a lot of people are starting to understand that, that people with intellectual disabilities should have a right to, to make decisions for themselves. This is how a disability rights movement should be organized, uh, not with professionals looking down or talking to individuals with disabilities, but really uh, folks with disabilities, including individuals with cognitive disabilities or intellectual disabilities, leading the show, taking the lead, and really being at the table at each and every critical point in, in those discussions and those advocacy stra and strategy sessions. When I came into the Commonwealth, um, I, they were one of the first groups that I really wanted to spend some time with and to learn more about. Um, Self-advocates are a very important um, group of stakeholders for us and um, I really wanted to hear what their issues and concerns were and to determine how the department could better partner with them um, in terms of what we do in terms of our services and supports for people. So they were, um, they were a great group when they came in. Um, they are certainly very able um, to speak up and speak out um, on issues that are important to them. Our mission is for self-advocates through education to be able to make choices that better their lives, basically. And the three goals are the first is to develop a strong self-advocacy network across Massachusetts. The second is to have the, build the infrastructure and have the resources uh, to be able to reach our goals and to further our mission. And the third and last one is to take action on issues that are important to self-advocates. For instance, we want to change the name of the Department of Mental Retardation. People don't like the word of 
a late, uh, retardation, and it, and it hurts people, um, because people don't like the word, uh, the R word, and they, and they, they want to do, they want to have the name to be, to be changed. The term mental retardation has been viewed by lots of self-advocates as something that's very stigmatizing and demeaning and uh, they've really advocated very well for a bill that would change our name to the Department of Developmental Services. We're one of the few agencies in the country that still includes mental retardation as part of our name so it's really a very significant bill and they've really uh, been at the forefront of that legislative activity. And we're hoping, along with them, um, if we all work hard, um, that we're going to see that legislation pass, um, hopefully, in this session. And so self-advocacy isn't just about the person or the persons that are meeting. It's about giving back to our community. And by that, I mean being a good citizen, voting, being active in your community, and supporting uh, things that are in your community. And it's just very exciting because even what I thought we would get in terms of 10 years out. It's just pretty exciting because you can see people's uh, self-esteem be built up, people are happy, they're excited about things, and they're looking forward to new uh, opportunities in their life. I think individuals with disabilities, just like all of us, want to be more in charge of, of, of their lives. And um, I think that that empowerment um, is something that helps them uh, to grow as individuals. Um, and allows them to participate more in their life in the community um, and is a benefit to all of us in the Commonwealth. Um, trying to um, enable people to work more um, is, a, is a means of not only increasing their self-esteem but increasing economic independence. Um, having them participate in various social and recreational activities um, in their communities um, enriches not only their lives, uh, but the lives of others um, in the community as well. And um, I think that it's, it's an issue that, you know, in, a, in an opportunity for all of us as uh, citizens of the Commonwealth uh, to have, to just enjoy a better quality of life. I think the, the vision I have is one of equality, like everybody else is looking for equality, that, 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 that people with intellectual disabilities would be allowed to make decisions about what they want to do, where they want to live, what they want to do with their lives. Once we give people an opportunity and give them the same equal rights that everybody else has, we get equal results. I think the end game for this is is it just, just doesn't benefit the person with a disability, it benefits the whole society. It's very exciting to see the progress of people over a period of time go from people that were devalued or didn't think much of themselves to be cheery and happy and because they know that they can make this decisions on their own or with some support and also have control of the money and know that they can live where they want to live and who they want to live with um, and make choices that, that better their lives and make them happy. So it's very exciting for me. So I think that's the most important thing that it's been for me. It's been a real fascinating experience to take an organization uh, from sort of its birth to 10 years out and to see the progress we've made. Uh, sometimes it can be frustrating because, you know, you, sometimes you don't have the resources or you want to do more, but when you take a step back and you talk to other people and you hear from people about what we've accomplished so far, it's just been a wonderful opportunity and experience for someone like me and I've really enjoyed it. It's not hyperbole to say that it's an honor and a privilege for the Disability Law Center to be uh, working with uh, friends, allies and partners with Mass in our common effort to ensure, to safeguard and expand the, the rights and opportunities for people with disabilities across Massachusetts. I think that when we look back uh, from where the organization has come to where it is now, um, we see a record of just tremendous accomplishment. I think um, we have an opportunity to have um, a wonderful next 10 years and um, uh, to work closely together to just further empower and further expand um, uh, the opportunities for people with disabilities in the Commonwealth. 
I'm proud of the organization that we have lasted. I'm proud of the fact that, you know, we've got like 1,900 members. Okay, I'm proud of the fact that people are beginning to recognize Mass and Mass's voice. And I think what happens is eventually what will happen will be that, that things is, is going to be changed politically and Mass is going to be in, 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 in the front of it.